Hey guys, today we are going to create Jarvis, which is a desktop assistant assistant that will take your voice commands and execute them. Uh, so before we get started, uh, first off, I just wanted to say thank you to you guys. We are about to hit 100 subscribers and it really means a lot to me. So I've been getting a lot of great feedback on Reddit and things like that and I just really appreciate it. So thank you guys. So here we go. Let's go ahead and run this here. There we go. So, I am ready for your command. Now, uh, let's say email. Who is the recipient? John. John. What should I say? What's up, man? Email sent. All right, so while we're waiting for this here, let's say uh, open Reddit Python. All right, there we go. And what's up? Just doing my thing. All right, so there we go. And you guys will see, we'll refresh our inbox here. And <clears throat> we should have an email. Who is the recipient? Oops. All right. Uh, there we go. And there it is. Except it said top man instead of what's up man. But generally speaking, it will catch it. So we'll close this guy out. And let's get started making this here. All right. So start off here, we have a number of dependencies. So let's go ahead and take from GTTS, which is Google Text to Speech. It will be able to read, record our audio, and we'll be able to use that to parse our audio and execute the commands. So let's go ahead and import uh, GTTS. So from GTTS, import GTTS. And next, we're going to import speech recognition. Uh, recognition, which is going to help us out with that. And uh, let's go ahead and import a few other dependencies that will allow us to play our audio, uh, go to certain URLs on the web, and also send mail. So let's import OS, import web browser, and import smtplib. All right. So you guys, if you have any problems, uh, installing these dependencies uh, definitely leave a comment below and I can help you guys out with that some of them are a little tricky so let's go ahead here and create a function called talk to me that will output whatever Jarvis or lady Jarvis here wants to say so we'll say def talk to me and that is going to be passed a string which will be our audio so we'll pass audio here and next we're going to say print audio because we want to be able to see in our in our interpreter what is being said just to make sure everything is working properly. Uh, next, we're going to create a variable called TTS, which is going to take Google's text to speech um, method here, and we are going to say text equals audio, and we are going to set the language to English. All right. Next, we are going to say text to speech dot save, and that will save our audio file in the same folder as your script is, so it will be able to play play back to you what your command was if you want. So we'll say audio dot mp3, and next we're going to say os dot system, and we're going to use a, a command line audio executor. So we're going to say mpg. One two three, and we're going to say audio .mp3. So that will play the uh, the audio .mp3 file with mpg one two three. Again, guys, that's another small package you do have to install. Um, you should be able to find that with a quick Google search, and it's as simple as just downloading it from command line, and that'll work out fine for you guys um, or terminal. So uh, let's go ahead and create a function now that's going to listen to the commands. So we're going to say this one listens for commands. And we are going to define it and call it my command. All right, so we'll say def uh, my command. And in this function here, what we are going to do is create an object which is R, and we're going to call that uh, speech recognizer. So this will be the element that will capture or help capture part of our speech that we are saying into our mic. So let's go ahead and say r equals sr.recognizer. 
and now let's say with sr.microphone it will use your uh, microphone or your uh, microphone that's on your computer by default so let's go ahead and say with sr.microphone as source uh, let's go ahead and print I am ready for your next command there we go and now let's go ahead and create a pause threshold so this will just give us a little bit of time before uh, it starts looking for the sound for our next command so we'll say pause threshold and that'll equal one and now we want to create a small adjustment for ambient noise so just in case you're in a more noisy room or you have a little bit of music playing in the background we don't want to just pick up commands from your music so we'll say r dot adjust uh, for ambient noise all right and we're going to have that from our source here and the duration will be one all right next we want to say uh we want to create our audio which is or an audio variable which is just going to be our speech recognizer listening um at the source so r dot listen and source all right there we go so now we want to after this go ahead and try uh, command will define a variable called command and we're going to set that equal to r dot recognize uh, Google and it's going to be Google audio all right so what this is going to do now we have we set our microphone as our source we have a um, kind of a primer so we know that it's ready to take our command here uh, we're adjusting the source so that it's not listening to the excess noise and then it's going to create the audio file by taking the input that it hears from our microphone after um, after it activates the source here so now we're going to try to set the command variable equal to the audio that was captured here and then we want to print out um, a line if it did capture our audio that says you said and we're going to add in the command there and then a new line all right so again this is just so we can make sure everything's working when we're watching it execute so uh, now we're going to go ahead here and uh, loop back because if we don't if we capture some speech that's unrecognizable or that's not a command we don't want our program just to throw an error and quit so let's go ahead and loop back to continue to listen for commands uh, if we can't find recognizable speech so loop back uh, continue to listen to the commands uh, so just a quick again comment to keep track of where we are here and now let's go ahead and throw our exception which is going to be sr unknown value error which again is going to be in case we capture noise that we don't understand or that the program uh, doesn't understand what that is. So assistant and my command. All right, so if we capture unknown noise, we're just going to repeat this function in order to go back and just be ready for our next command. So now that we've got that, uh, we are going to finally return our command as the last line of this function because when we call it we want to be able to pass it to sort of a chain of if else statements that will uh, execute certain things based on what we said so now we are going to create the if statements here that will execute our commands so we've got our if statements for executing commands and let's go ahead and create a function called assistant so we're going to def assistant and command all right, now we are going to say, uh, for this example here, or for what I did, we're gonna do uh, if open Reddit Python in command, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the path of our browser and open it. Now I'm gonna uh, hold up here just for a second because in here is where you guys can add whatever you want. So if you wanna have uh, it open up certain URLs in certain ways with certain browsers or you can put a whole list of different um, commands for opening up different URLs. Uh, so definitely go ahead and put that in here if you guys wanna add some additional functionality. The three things I did or the three things we're gonna do for this tutorial here are uh, how to open like reddit python when we give that command um, we're going to open uh, or how to send email and then we're also going to go ahead and just do the the what's up so it gives us a response there so let's go ahead and say again if open reddit python in command we're going to say chrome path and we want to set the path of your chrome.exe if you're on windows or if you're on linux or unix um, or like a Mac operating system, I mean, then you want to go ahead and set 
uh, that to that file path or to the script that opens up your Google Chrome. So for me, uh, I'm gonna be on Linux here, so we're gonna do backslash user, backslash bin, backslash Google Chrome. Now, if you guys are on, say, Windows and wanna find this, go ahead to your Chrome shortcut if you have it on your desktop or something like that, or open it in the file path. Uh, you want to click on, you want to right click it, uh, check out the properties, and then you'll be able to see the file path there. You just copy that, paste it right in here. Uh, and just make sure you pass it as a string. So let's go ahead and set up our Chrome path. Now we've got a variable to represent our URL. So this will be HTTPS, www, or backslash, yeah, semicolon, no, colon, backslash, backslash, www.reddit.com, backslash R, backslash Python. All right, and then we're gonna say web browser get, and we're gonna get the Chrome path, and we are going to open it with the URL. Okay, there we go. So that will uh, that'll open up our Python for us if we ask it to. Next, we want to say if what's up is in our command. So what's uh, let's go ahead and add a little trick here. Let's see. If uh, what's up? All right, so yeah, we want the uh, want the backslash in there just to prevent the extra colon from ending our or extra uh, parenthesis from ending our string. So if what's up in command, <clears throat> then we want to go ahead and call the talk to me function, which will say out loud the string that we pass it. So we're gonna pass it, chilling, bro. All right, there we go. Now, if email is in our command, we're going to go ahead and start a mail server, uh, move to the socket that will help us send out that mail and take care of that. So let's say if email in command, then we're going to say uh, talk to me and we're gonna ask for the, who the recipient is. So who is the recipient? All right, next we're gonna go ahead and say the, or uh, set a variable, which is going to be recipient, and that is going to equal uh, the value that talk to me uh, gets here. So we're gonna say recipient is, we're just gonna call the my command, which again will return a value, which will be the uh, name of the recipient. All right, there we go. And now we're going to say if uh, whoever now again if you guys want to have the ability to send mail to a bunch of different contacts here You're just gonna want to put if and then their name is in the command So in this case, I mean, I'm just gonna use my name But you guys can use whatever names you want to add in there and just make sure that well a few lines down You're gonna be adding in the proper email address for that person. So we could say if John in recipient Then we want to go ahead here and say talk to me and that'll be, what should I say? Because now we want to, it's asking us for the message content. All right, there we go. And we're gonna set a variable called content. And now that is going to be calling my command again in order to get our message content. So there we go. Now we wanna do a few lines here that are going to set up our um, SMTP through, we're gonna be using Gmail um, and go ahead and send our mail. SMTP is just simple ma mail transfer protocol. It's kind of like HTTPS is for the internet, but this is for sending mail. So let's go ahead here and say uh, init Gmail SMTP. And we're gonna say mail equals smtplib.smtp and we're going to set a string here that is going to be smtp.gmail.com. Now, if you guys want to send it from different email addresses, there are different smtp.blanks.coms that you will send it for. So say you're sending it from like Outlook or whatever, uh, I'm pretty sure you would just replace where Gmail is with Outlook or such, but go ahead and uh, definitely Google that real quick too, just to make sure, um, and that'll work just fine for you guys. And now we want to use port 587. All right. So there we go. Now we want to identify with our server. So we're gonna say identify, identify to server. And we're going to say mail.ehlo. So that will just quickly identify ourselves. Uh, now we want to encrypt our session. And now these are just things that again, we have to do in order to send mail uh, from a Python script here. So E-N-C-R-Y-P-T, encrypt uh, session. 
And let's go ahead here again, just adding comments to keep track here. And let's go ahead and say mail.starttls. All right, and now we're going to log into our mail. So here, guys, is where you would put your logins. So we're going to say mail.login. And now I'm not going to put mine here, but you would put your username. So it'll be username. And you would go ahead and put your password. All right. So that would do that. That'll log you into your Gmail account there. Now we want to have a line that'll send our message. So let's go ahead and you would call mail.sendmail. And now we can go ahead here. And in this uh, in this function call here, what you would do is put the uh, name of the person that you want to send the mail to as your first string. So person's name. So person name. All right. And then you would put their um, email address. So email address. I'll uh, pass it to string. So email address at whatever.com and then finally you're going to pass um, the content which we captured above so that'll send the mail and then you want to go ahead and close your mail connection so let's go ahead and call mail.close all right and then afterwards we want a cue that our mail has been sent so we're going to say talk to me and that is going to be email sent All right. Now, finally, at the end of our um, assistant uh, function, which we pass our command, we want it to be ready for our next command. So we're just going to say, uh, talk to me. I am ready for your command. All right. And now, finally, we just want to instantiate a loop here that will continue to ask us for commands while the program is running. Uh, so we're going to say while true, we're going to call assistant and my command. All right, there we go. So now, guys, when you run this, uh, what will happen here is you will be able to, again, do all the things that we saw quickly in the video there. Definitely go ahead and add in uh, some other if statements for other commands you might want to add. You can make it do a bunch of things like play music, open up uh, YouTube videos, go to whatever URL you want, open up desktop programs. Basically, it'll run as just a full-blown Jarvis or desktop assistant, whatever you guys want to call it. So, all right, guys, uh, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you guys all in the next video.